now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It is 7.06 on this Friday, first day of November, All Saints Day, for those who acknowledge. And we appreciate you joining us, all of you saints out there. Coming up in 30 minutes, Bram Weinstein, whose voice is probably still pretty hoarse from that incredible call on the Hail Mary against the Bears last Sunday. Will he give us a preview of this Sunday's game against the Giants? 805, Tom Bevan, Real Clear Politics, this latest round of polling and what it really means. And at 835, Governor Scott Walker will let us know what's going on in his beloved Badger state. He's also, of course, president of YAF, so we'll ask him about the youth vote and whether Trump has made oh, significant yeah, inroads right. there. It's Larry O'Connor. That there is Patrice Onwuka looking sparkly and bubbly. It's like you uh, were out getting candy with your kids last night. You know, how did you know what I was up to, Larry? <laughs> <laughs> Happy Friday to you and everybody out Thank there. Thank you. Amen to that. And joining us right now, talk about a saint. He has to live <laughs> with Mercedes Schlapp. And five daughters. Good Lord, man. Matt Schlapp joins us now, uh, the head of CPAC and the American Conservative Union. Good morning, Matt. Are you, are you all Are you even getting any sleep right now in this time? <laughs> it's a weird year in every conceivable way, yeah. I have to say. The, uh, the campaign, to me, feels like it's hit a very nice stride. I feel like um, the Trump effect is less impactful because we've had eight years of it. Mm. And they mm. tried to make him into such a bogeyman, into such a, like, uh, bring up all these terrible charges and everything else. And over time, I think it's the, the, these new socialist Democrats who mm. look like the ones who are trying to, you know, wreck the country. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and also, I, I mentioned this earlier, I, this time around, unlike 16, unlike 20, Despite everything that they've thrown at him, trying to make him into a felon and a criminal and all of this jazz, Matt, I've noticed that it seems like in some way the stigma, the public stigma about supporting Trump has sort of whittled away. It's not gone completely, but you're seeing yeah. way more high profile people stepping up and saying, yeah, I'm, I'm going with Trump. Athletes, movie stars, musicians, mm-hmm. uh, uh, CEOs. Look at all of the successful billionaire CEOs who were just fine with stepping up and saying, yeah, it's not even close. I'm supporting Trump. That's different this time around. Do you think that that's an indication of something bigger going on? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, we were giving out Halloween candy last night. and These people aren't movie stars around us, but like they were, there was more people coming up to us. Uh, one guy had his MAGA hat on. Mm. That's pretty mm. brave in my neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> yeah. In my neighborhood, you can get sued for wearing a MAGA hat. Um, <laughs> the uh, cops are going to come around. The uh, So, yeah, I do think people – I think they're fed up. Uh, I think mm-hmm. Chinese corona made us fed up. Yeah. I think them locking us down made us fed up. I think them teaching our kids that they were not the, this gender but one of 62 genders uh, <laughs> made us fed up. I think what happened in Virginia, you know, with what was all this – porn in the library for second graders to learn how to get sexually active made people fed up. By the way, I still think a lot of that's out there. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I just think people have had enough. I mean, the Democratic Party became Marxist and lost their ever-loving minds. And the American people are not radical. We're not radical one way. We're not radical Mm -hmm. the other way. The American people don't have my views on everything in politics. I I get that. There's more of a pendulum. And they are way, way extreme. I don't think they could get elected in Paris, France. And it's time for this. It's time for this to end. I want my old, I want my my grandmother's Democratic Party that yeah. uh, liked people of faith, that liked the military, that had a lot of cops in their family, and loved the country. They just liked more government. I would much rather mm-hmm. have that version of the Democratic Party. Well, and Matt, they're also growing more desperate. And I think we're seeing the desperation not only in their rhetoric, but the attempts that they're, that people are going to in these final days of the election. Um, recent This week, CP, uh, CPAC, uh, I guess, filed a claim that there's evidence in, in Wisconsin of illegal ballot harvesting. Can you talk about what that claim was? Yeah. What exactly happened and, and what are you hoping to come out of this? We sent letters to all the state officials in all the battleground states. It really in all the states that use drop boxes, and you'd be shocked at what these policies are. First of all, most of them didn't respond to us. They want to do this in the dark of night. Mm-hmm. Most of them put them out there on streets. 
with no security guards, no election officials. Mm. They're there day and night. They're not protected, which is why you can torch them or set them on fire or get into them. Yeah, as we saw. Um, and so in uh, one particular state where we have hired or contracted with observers to watch the boxes day and night, uh, all according to the law, all mm-hmm. according uh, uh, to all the regulations, um, we, there's an affidavit of a of an observer who saw someone jamming the box with ballots. Now, in that state, the state of Wisconsin, you you, you can put your ballot in there, but you can't go mm-hmm. around and pick up a bunch of stray ballots. Uh, and Scott Walker understands this. Uh, you should ask him about it. But Mil- Milwaukee and Wisconsin have a long tradition um, of the Democrats uh, basically breaking the law when it comes to election day activities and voting activities. Now, we've done something crazy in this country. We've extended voting day for voting 30 days. Yeah. We put these boxes <laughs> on the street. And everywhere we do CPAC on all these continents, no democracy uh, uh, executes their election in this way. We are the only ones who can't seem to get over COVID, and we are the only ones who can't seem to get over slavery. <laughs> Nobody has an issue with voter ID, and no one says that's because of slavery. Only in America, and all the white people yeah. cower yeah. and say, oh, my God, yeah, we did have slavery, so that means we can't So no IDs this. when you go to vote. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like, Obviously, the connection is there. Yeah. Wake that's a great up, everybody. point, Matt. Wake up, everybody. They're pulling the wool over your eyes. This has nothing to do with slavery. We're speaking with Madge Slap, the uh, Grand Poobah of CPAC. And he is a Grand Poobah. I've seen him wear his fez around the house. Matt, uh, I I know that after the 2020 election, you were dispatched to Nevada. I know this because uh, my buddy Kurt Schlichter was there with you uh, as a lawyer. Great looking, man. Yeah, he is a great man. And by, and I think you both caught COVID at the same time because of it. Um but you saw a lot in Nevada, stuff that never made it into a courtroom, stuff that a judge would never look at, stuff that uh, Curtis convinced me was absolutely uh, nefarious and would have made a difference in the Nevada Electoral College results. We're now seeing, you know, we have a new chairman of the RNC, and we're seeing uh, hundreds of thousands of duplicate votes already in Michigan. Uh, the RNC sued. They've been able to negate those votes. We've seen the Colorado Secretary of State acknowledge that they released publicly passwords for the voting machines. We've seen uh, uh, the state of Virginia have to go take it all the way to the Supreme Court to make sure that non-citizens are removed from the voter rolls. I know that you're in tune on this stuff and you're sensitive to what happens on Tuesday and more importantly, the days after Election Day. What are you looking at, Matt? What is CPAC focused on? You've already told us about Wisconsin. What are you concerned about and do you feel better about where the RNC is on this stuff? I'll be as fast as I can. Stacey Abrams mainlined this through corporate boardrooms that somehow voter ID was racist and keeping cleaning up your voter rolls was racist. So we wasted our time for years in this country having a stupid conversation, moving all star games, all about whether or not you should be legal to vote. Then Biden and Harris opened up the border. They let at their own estimates, 15 million people. I think that's many million shy of what actually got into the country. Now they've hired Mark Elias to go all over the country and to keep illegals on the voting rolls. Make that very clear. This is a matter of now of public record. This is not Matt Schlapp's opinion. This is not Republicans saying there's no evidence of this. They are in courtrooms as we speak, arguing to keep all the illegals who got IDs, all the illegals who got benefits on the rolls. They are now, it's on the record. And so the other piece of this is that they're arguing that people overseas who aren't even really Americans should vote, that people who uh, people shouldn't have to vote with an ID. The full radicalism of their anti-democratic behavior is on display for everyone to see. By the way, Hmm. nobody does this at any democracy all over the globe. So why do they want all these illegal votes? Well, they want all these illegal votes because they want to water down all of our votes. And the great irony is the Democratic Party used to say they were doing this because of, you know, the old Jim Crow days when they were trying to water down the votes of uh, African Americans. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Now, they're the ones who are watering down the votes of legal African Americans by hey. trying to have <laughs> illegal votes count in the Amazing. mix. And the American people now can see it. It's no longer an argument in the Republican Party. They all see it. And if they try to pull all this stuff like they did in Nevada 
Las Vegas, uh, in Las Vegas and other places. Yeah. I think the whole world is going to come unglued, not just America. Yeah. Matt, um, you know, I see that we're about to take up the topic of Mark Cuban and his remarks, and, and you actually live with one of these women that is weak and stupid, Mercedes Schlapp. Can you stick with us for another segment to talk about Mark Cuban? Sure. Oh, good. All right. Oh, my God. I love I you. bet you would. That's why <laughs> That's why I teased it that way. 716, let's go. WMAL. Making sense of the news. Donald Trump, you never see him around strong, intelligent women. Ever. Yeah. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. I think that's my favorite <laughs> oh my part. Goodness. My favorite part. It's just that simple. Matt Schlapp continues with us. Not only is he the chairman of the American Conservative Union, which runs the CPAC conference, but you are literally surrounded on a minute-by-minute basis by those very women that Mark Cuban just called weak and stupid. Not only your wife, Mercedes Schlapp, who worked in a, uh, a very important job in the White House directly with Donald Trump, but all of your daughters as well, who are constantly around <laughs> President Trump on a regular basis. So, Matt, I'd love for you to react to that. What, what did you think when you heard Marky Mark say such things? I thought, oh, he didn't do that, did he? Yeah. Uh, he has no <laughs> idea what's about ready to come down on his head. I mean, I don't know if anybody's ever met Kellyanne Conway, but uh, the last <laughs> thing I would call her is weak. Mm. Yeah. Uh, or have you ever met Susie Wiles, the campaign manager today? Sarah Sanders. No one's ever- Oh. Sarah Sanders, yeah. my mm-hmm. wife. Uh, this is uh, Linda McMahon is one tough lady. I, I don't even yes. know what they're talking about. And yeah. by the way, so for my sisters and my mom and Mercy's sister and her mom and for my daughters, uh, two of them voted. Oh, my God. There's not a weak one in the bunch. By the way, my college kids, when they heard this, they were one kind of fired up. I, I think wow. they would like to match SAT scores with Ooh. Kamala Harris and Joe Biden and Tim Waltz right now. Let's go. Let's go compare. Who's smarter? Listen, my college girls or that <laughs> I, wacko I, I, Tim Waltz? Who I don't think I have, graduated from high school. I have met Patrice. I have met with <laughs> both of those young women, yes. and I can tell you, I cannot measure up. So I, I think Mark Cuban is going to have some issues as well. I mean, Matt, we this this has been the the most terrible, horrible, no good week for can, can, uh, Harris surrogates. Um, Biden put in his foot in his mouth. Aside from the baby's feet, I mean, put his foot in his mouth talking about Americans being garbage. And then my, Mark Cuban says, "Hold my beer. <laughs> I'm going to call women oh, Trump supporting women, you know, weak and 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 stupid." What is, what 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 are, what's going on over there? Is it time to pull all of the surrogates, or should we just say, "Hey, throw more of them out there, so we can hear more of what they really think of us"? Oh, we dropped. We, uh, if, uh, sadly, Matt got disconnected, so we're uh, obviously one of his daughters interrupted him on the phone. Yeah. And wanted to jump in there. <laughs> Do we have Matt back? All right, let's. Try. Patrice was just asking you, Matt, um, about what a horrible week this has been from Biden it's and been... the garbage comments. Yeah. Yeah, and all that the, the, well, the surrogates. So let me just say this. I, 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 I put it all out in a tweet last night. You know, remember, they called us deplorable. Then they called the Catholics mm-hmm. irredeemable, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Now, we're, uh, now, now we're not intelligent or, small or strong. We're garbage. Yeah. We're Nazis. Mm-hmm. We're extreme MAGA Republicans. We're insurrectionists. Uh, we're election deniers. We're going to make you sick. We're going to kill you. Uh, you know, they have thrown every nasty thing at all of us or a big part of us, they have insulted every aspect of traditional America or just common sense America. You can't get to the White House. This is what they used to say. You can't get to the White House by insulting people. It's not Donald Mm. Trump who's insulting people. Donald Trump's insulting them, the leaders, the Mm. people that are, you know, doing this. Uh, He said that the prosecutors were scum. They are scum. They're un-American. They broke all the rules. And we need four years to, to make them stop. And as I said earlier, go back to just being big government Democrats. Stop being these, uh, you know, these, these cancel culture, nasty, un-American um, voices. Just yeah. stop it. Stop it. Why don't we respect each other and just see who wins the election? Yeah. And then go be an opposition party. All right, Matt Schlapp, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, I know Matt. how insanely busy you are, and uh, I know you're not going to rest either. There's a whole lot of work that still will be done. Hopefully the work will be done Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. But you know how these things go, and we'll continue mm-hmm. to stay on top of this all-important and election. Well, Larry, we'll keep you posted on what we hear out of the states. 
Uh, we've already made this one uh, complaint in Wisconsin. There's more coming, so I'll keep you guys Please do. On that. Please Terrific. do. And it's a good time to remind everybody that CPAC is uh, much, much more than just one weekend per year. They're constantly doing this kind of important work for our country and for the conservative movement. And Matt, I've seen the toll it takes on you and your family. So thank you for that.